In 2018, HCTV received a small grant from the Helena Area Community Foundation to create a video collage addressing some of the transportation challenges for residents who are economically disadvantaged or have physical disabilities or both. What follows is not at all comprehensive, but we hope the short vignettes featuring real people and real situations helps to illustrate some genuine hurdles and that greater public awareness will lead to concerted community effort to improve services vital to the quality of life in the capital city. The first thing that comes to mind when thinking about getting around town is the use of a personal car. Though that proves to have its own difficulties, such as wading through traffic and waiting for the train. It does not compare to having to walk to your destinations. Helena is a spread out town where services such as doctor's offices, the hospital, shopping, and social services agencies are spread from one end to the other. An individual would also need to get to work and back to their home. In winter, it's well nigh impossible for one to walk if you have a physical disability. But what if you can't afford a car, the gas, the repairs and insurance? What if you are not able to drive a vehicle? One would then first rely on public transportation, such as a public bus service. Bus system's important for several reasons. Normally, most traditionally, there's been vehicles on streets. Not everybody can afford a vehicle. Not everybody can drive. Uh, not everybody um, wants to drive. There are those that choose that as a lifestyle. There are those that choose it because of financial means. There are those that are not of age to drive or are t unfor the, the sad part of it is they get too old and are not supposed to drive anymore. So for multiple reasons, safety, health, welfare, environment, you name it, that's why it's important to have public transportation in a community. It's not just about, well, it's nice to have a bus. The bus serves a purpose. There's a reason behind it. Um, whether people agree or disagree with that, the na the nationwide it's agreed that public transportation is important. Helena has a couple different transportation options aside from owning a personal car. The public bus system, taxis, Uber, and many organizations that offer services to those with disabilities also have vehicles to give rides to those utilizing services. But using public transportation is limited. The time frame the services are available is limited and the other options may be too expensive. So what's it like to live and work in Helena without a car? Those of us with reliable automobiles and steady incomes don't have to think about this much but for Tony Osterhoff in East Helena, it's a daily reality. The bus is not a, does not run on holidays, weekends. Uh, it does not run after 5 o'clock. And it's very, very difficult to take the bus. You have to call a day ahead for a guarantee by 4 p.m. If you don't, there is no guarantee you'll get your wish that day. So you really have to be on your toes for that. The taxi, on the other hand, from East Helena is $17.50 one way. And if you go from the M.E. Anderson Apartments in Helena out to the hospital, it's $12 or $13 one way. Most of us who are retired and on a fixed income do not have a lot of cash on hand. After bills are paid and you get your groceries and necessities, I generally have $5 for a week and a half left. So, and I have a pretty good social security compared to others, but I have no extra retirement because my husband transferred as an accountant for a lumber company and I had to keep getting different jobs. So it's, it's tough with the transportation. Well, I'd, I would like to see the bus run on weekends and maybe until eight or seven so that people that have late appointments that they can't get out of because the doctor has a hundred people in a week or more so the appointments are only so many. And if they get out at 4.30 or 5, they're going to miss the bus. So I'd like to see the bus a little more uh, accessible. However, I know that they have to be justified by the amount of riders. The costs of transportation can be daunting, 
especially when local bus service is simply unavailable. However, Capital Transit is the best price in town. At only 85 cents a ride, it serves as the most economical option. What's it like to use the public transit system in Helena? To get a feel for the experience, we went for a ride on Capital Transit. Our Helena public bus experience was a nice one. The buses are in great shape and are handicap accessible. However, the lack of services in the evenings and on weekends and holidays make it difficult for those that depend on it for all hours of the day. The fixed routes only go to certain locations and still require one to walk to the front door of their destination, which could mean a couple blocks to a couple miles. They want to live normal lives like you and I. Um, they believe that we should have something available all the time, and I agree. But at the same time, the reality is, is sometimes I can't even go when I need to go places, depending on factors. And, you know, so it's important that we find that flexibility that allows everyone to be able to see what we see. Now, we've been asked to, here recently, to provide services to Fort Harrison. Well, um, to do it under the traditional sense, it's about $150,000 or more just to set up a fixed route to run that way. Um, and then we have to redefine our service areas, which again are just the corporate city limits of Helena. The paratransit ridership really doesn't get to go shopping like the normal, traditional, able-bodied household would. Mm -hmm. They're limited to Monday through Friday for everything they do unless they want to take the cab or use Uber or Lyft on weekends. So I understand the importance of wanting to look at the potential of what can we do, how can we make this happen. That way it becomes a universal system that takes all riders on all days to go where they want to go, which I think would then lessen the stress of our ridership during the weekdays by spreading it out over six to seven days total and including operational hours that we don't have right now on those weekends. We're open to looking at what we can do within the framework and budget constraints we have now. Um, the challenge is always doing more with less and we will continue to do more with less until we have to figure out what we end up with as a transit service, how far we think we can actually go with what we can provide. In addition to the regular fixed route bus service, Capital Transit has a small fleet of paratransit vehicles that accommodate people with wheelchairs and can be scheduled over the phone with door-to-door -door service. The paratransit is an effort to expand the bus services to those that can walk to their destinations from the fixed route stops because of their disabilities. Basically, is this is a curb-to-curb -curb service where they call and have scheduled a ride and we pull up to their house at a scheduled time. Um, I'd normally be in the bus, but I'll go ahead and, and get the bus ready and open the doors as to if we, we're pulling up to, to load the passenger. And we do take people to doctor's appointments, uh, grocery shopping, clothes shopping. Some people out to breakfast or dinner or lunch. When you load the wheelchair, you want to make sure each the locks are locked. If they have an electric wheelchair, you'd like to have them shut the wheelchair off for safety purposes. And when you're coming up with lift, you always want to kind of keep your hand on the lift Tell the person, you know, we're going to go up, ask them if they're ready. That way, if there's any movement, you can feel it first and you can stop the lift for safety purposes. I'm going to go ahead and lift the lift up now. Oh, yeah. And you help the person in, just pass the door. Okay. Full lift up. Shut the doors. 
and we're going to go inside. Okay, and then you can position the person to where the these tracks here on the floor hold tie downs. You want to lock the wheelchair or have them turn the wheelchair off. These are the wheelchair securements. Okay, you always want to do the front and the back. The back ones need to be set down to where they're angled up at a 45 inside. The front ones will actually be set outside the wheelchair just a little bit so they have a double angle to help secure the wheelchair. Like I had mentioned before, these are a little bit of outside the frame so you get an angle going up and an angle coming down and that helps stabilize the wheelchair. And then you also want it at a higher point that you can get on the chair for the center of gravity and you always want to be on the frame to where it's more secure, to where if you do get in an accident, the chair is not going to move. And also, most wheelchairs do come with their own seat belts, but we're required to ask the passenger if they would like a, a lap belt restraint or a shoulder restraint. Some do, some don't. Total, all the buses with the paratransits anywhere from 100 up to, I've seen it at our busiest peak was like 220 in one day. Average is 130 to 150. Many Helena citizens that utilize public transportation also utilize other public services like Helena Food Share. Food is, like transportation, a basic need. We learned how Paula McDonald, who resides at the Jean Francis Home, a sober home for women on Rodney Street, navigates her way to Food Share and back again. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. God bless you. Well over 8,000 people used food share last year, with 1,667,992 pounds of food passing through their doors. Getting to this essential service has proven very difficult for those who cannot find a ride. I haven't been back because I, you know, don't have a ride. Yeah, I, and because public transportation is not an option if I want to go to food share. It's not a lot of people's option if they want to go to food share. It's very limited what you can do on the bus. Everything is interconnected, transportation, food, and housing. Okay. Many of the people that are in need of these services have limited incomes, mental or physical health issues, disabilities, homelessness, and more. Yep. Most people that use public transportation have these needs. They need to get set up and in order for us to do that, we have to use all these resources and we don't have any. And so we're trying to put it together and it gets frustrating for a lot of people and a lot of people just don't do it. You have like the shooken up puzzle pieces. It would be like knowing what piece you needed, what would fit perfect, but you have to wait for somebody else to give it to you. You know, and so it's, can get frustrating. You have to be very, very dedicated to be a full-time public transportation participant in Helena. <laughs> it takes lots of planning. Having multiple disabilities affects a great many of Helena residents' capability to drive. Carrie Jones has been using one form of wheelchair or another since she was a little kid. She's become very skillful with her motorized unit, getting in and out of vans and buses as she makes her way to medical appointments, sporting events, and social gatherings. Peers Unlimited, 
Partners Ensuring Equal Rights and Support, is an agency in Helena that provides those with disabilities the opportunity to integrate into the community. Peers will provide rides for people like Carrie so they can attend functions like all others that do not have disabilities. When Carrie's unable to get a ride by peers, she uses the paratransit bus service or taxi or has to ask for a ride. When asked what transportation means to her, Carrie's response was much like what it would be for all of us. We just don't have to think about it much. Let's see, I go with him on Thursdays for peers and then social club social club events um, to the office. It just depends. Oh, no. What does it mean to you to be able to have transportation? What does that give you? It means everything. It gives me independence. It gives me freedom. I and I don't have to count on like my sister or my mom because they do enough transportation was so it means pretty much everything in my life yeah it helps my life go easier and my mom's life go easier and so it's like I said it's easier another transportation option in town is using the good old-fashioned taxi Sean Whitewolf has a lot of experience driving people and goods around town. He shared some insights while taking us on one of his routine routes through the capital city. When I first started working, there was, I believe they said about 180 calls a day um, regularly. So we were pretty busy. There was three or four of us taxi drivers running uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, I'm sorry, there was three or four of us taxi drivers per shift, and uh, it was uh, uh, more of a taxi system than it, what it is now. We have primarily scheduled pickups, and then uh, probably about 1% of our pickups are just people that call that need a ride. So it's changed incredibly. Um, I average probably 10, or I'd say 12 uh, runs during the time that I work. And I don't, I work just work part time, so I'm not here uh, driving constantly, but, okay. Things have changed mightily in the taxi business around here. Sure there are fewer mean. drivers, fewer cars, yet more demand than ever. With an aging population and a need for courier drivers, oh. the taxi comes in handy. And that's probably been the biggest change in the last year is um, we always did some like uh, medical uh, lab stuff from the VA to the St. Pete's uh, labs in the state labs. Um, we uh, occasionally had the uh, uh, medical medication run. Um, but now it's, it's about 50-50, courier type services and passengers. I think, you know, personally, I think that's where our business will probably be as far as transportation goes is uh, we've got an older population that is no longer driving, and then uh, medic for uh, patient or uh, what do they call it uh, uh, appointments. Yeah. And and then we get and and that's what's increased is prescription delivery. So, but it normally comes through a uh, their insurance company. So 
they uh, call us and tell us to go to such and such pharmacy, pick up something there, and then take it to the, either their home or their uh, the nursing home, something along that lines. And I think that's probably where our future is going to be: is more wheelchair runs, more medical runs. As far as the uh, rest of the population, um, I don't know. Whether it's using the taxi, capital transit's fixed routes, or paratransit services, or vans from organizations that service people with disabilities, or a car, transportation in Helena can be difficult, inconvenient, and expensive. But as this need increases, the hope is that the services will also increase and improve. Capital Transit, I believe, is going to be growing and changing in the future. We're always looking for ways to improve services to the community. Right now, uh, one of the things we're looking at is, is how to better serve the community more effectively. And what I mean by that is, is our fixed route service is limited in the, where the stops are located. As community TV producers, it's not for us to make serious recommendations for improving transportation options for those on limited incomes or are disabled, but we hope that our viewers will take the views of our gracious subjects to heart and mind and share some suggestions with local officials in the months ahead.